welcome back to the second part of our show tonight. Um, when Scott asked me to MC tonight and introduce Pete, I said, Scott, I've never heard this guy before. Tell me some things about Pete. What, what am I going to say? He said, well, you know, the thing that really makes Pete stand out is he's hip. <laughs> hip. Wow. So, doing some research, I had to go to his website and find out how hip he was. This is how hip he is. Pete once stayed in a hotel that Fleetwood Mac stayed in. And they were there at the same time. <laughs> the same time. Also, Pete drives, now is this hip or what? A Jeep. <laughs> so I knew this guy's got to be hip. He has a diary on his website. And he writes day-by-day -day stuff, that writes about his concerts, all the things that happen at each of the venues that he plays. And I was thinking, what is he going to write about tonight? So if you guys want to find out about tonight, go to the website tomorrow. <laughs> or later. Or later, yeah. No, but in all seriousness, Pete wrote the theme song for a fly fishing show on ESPN. Is that hip? That is real. No, I could, no, but really, it's all seriousness, Pete is national finger-picking champion. Plays guitar like Scott says, wow, you're not going to believe this. One of the members in the audience tonight said, wait till you hear Pete. Just wait. Okay. So, guess what? We don't have to wait anymore. <laughs> That was priceless. I hope I live up to everything that you're not sure of about me. <laughs>
second semester. <laughs> Thank you. 
the other side of it. I was in, in South Korea in Seoul in 1995 with John Denver. And we, and we did perhaps love. Very nice. We, it was one of those concerts where you, you thought Elvis was there. I mean, 25,000 people actually rushed into the to the arena to see John Denver. And we thought, well, who are they here to see? John didn't think it was very funny, but <laughs> as the band, we did. We knew our jobs were secure. Where was he going to get a band in Seoul, South Korea? They knew what to <laughs> We thought we were okay with this one. It was one of the most fun concerts we ever did, though, playing in Seoul. Certainly in the 30 years they've done this, nobody's been clever enough to do something from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I thought there must be points for humor. So this is, this is my version of Over the Rainbow. Thank you. 
drove in from LA today. You know how fast people drive on Interstate 10? I've never driven on that road. We're going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, well, I'm just glad it was a rental. It wasn't my old Jeep. <laughs> my Jeep, it won't go 100 miles an hour. It might not go 100 miles. <laughs> that I wrote at a, at a sound check one day. I was doing a concert in El Paso a couple of years ago. And uh, the sound was really good and we had extra time so I just started playing around with stuff. And I wound up writing this tune and then I, I ran back to the hotel and worked it all out so I could remember it. And I went back to the gig and it was hosted at a, at a guitar school in El Paso. And the guy who runs the place, his name was Mario, I taught it to him. I said, we need to play this tonight. And, I, and uh, his wife, has a very beautiful name, her name is Hortensia. So I named it for her, this tune is called Hortensia.
Richmond fans in the room? Yes. All right. This one's for you.
that frontal lobotomy. <laughs> That's proof that it worked. <clears throat> Those of you who don't understand frontal lobotomy, they split their brain in half and <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Those of you who do, So, uh, is there a guitar program at this school? Yes. There is. Classical and jazz. Are there any guitar students here? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, this is where I was going to impart my, my, my wisdom of the years. It's been 20 years since I got out of college. I was telling the guys today when we were setting up, I said, you know, I sure could use beer. And they said, no, oh, not, nothing like that around here. And I said, man, what kind of school? See, I went to a jazz school up in Boston. And my last semester, I guess I can say this now. I don't even know if those, those teachers would know what I don't know. And I carried a bag of beer into my lessons with me. So OK, let's, let's have a couple of beers. And, we're gonna, and we played tunes. For, we played for an hour. And we'd have a couple of beers. It was the greatest guitar lessons I ever had. <laughs> It was sort of a real world kind of experience they were trying to give me. <laughs> Knowing that I'd be out soon, I'd be in the clubs. And there were things that you have to contend with, and it's best that you learn by, from someone who, who knows better. <laughs> they were very nice to you. Well, we didn't have to do a lot of classical music at this school. Try to change my frequency. We didn't have to do a lot of classical music. It was all jazz. And um, but when I got out, at one point, I wound up uh, when I started doing solo guitar stuff. See, I started out as like a rock and roll guitar player and played rock bands for a long, long time. And then I decided, well, I need to make a little more money and maybe I could get some solo gigs. And I found out really quickly that uh, I, I got this job at a real swanky restaurant in Nashville. I found out really fast that the swankier the restaurant the less anybody pays any attention. <laughs> you sit in a corner with your tuxedo on, of course, and next to the fig plant, and you play very quietly. <laughs> and nobody, you know, occasionally someone would request <laughs> They'd look up from your soup. And <laughs> And I, at that time, I was just thinking, man, I sure would love just, you know, to be able to turn somebody's head somehow, you know, with my guitar. And it, and it was really tough. So one night, it was it was a hotel restaurant, and so there was a there was a window on my left, and I looked, and, and I see down the hall checking in this guy with this really long beard, and I'm thinking, wow, I wonder, what if that's what I think it is? I don't know. But if it is, it could be a good thing for me. Then I look down and I see the second guy with a long beard. I'm like, uh oh. I think it's now. <laughs> there I am with the fig.
Uh, so I'll, I'll play a couple more tunes and uh, we'll get into that stuff. Here's, I, I really love Irish music, so here's a, an Irish tune and it'll go into one of my favorite pop arrangements that I play.
playing my guitar. I got here and walked into Scott's office, and Tom and Carlos were sitting there playing already. And so immediately, you know, here, get, get a guitar. And, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't in town five minutes. And we we're playing, and we didn't stop until it was time for Tom to come up and, and start the show. <laughs> so, so I think I'm warmed up enough to uh, try this little piece for you. This is one I wrote. I call it Brown Bummer. <laughs> So the next guy down the river will have something to catch, <laughs> and uh, it's it's quite a nice thing. And there's there's a there's a real beauty and joy in, in putting the fish back. Not that we put them all back. I mean, every now and then you got to have some. But uh, one of one of my favorite old tunes I put on this record is is called the, the Water Is Wide. So deep 
Scott in Winfield, Kansas, this place in the middle of nowhere, the pit told you. <laughs> and I was there, like, just have fun, and Scott called me and hey, man, come here, you need to see this guy, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and I almost cried when this guy told you. <laughs> My Brazilian hand, you know. <laughs>
we want to thank you all very much for coming to the concert. Uh, once again, I, I put a few CDs out there in, uh, in front of you aspiring guitar players. I actually have some, some uh, DVDs where I teach a lot of the stuff that I play. And we want to thank Carlos and especially Scott for, for uh, inviting me out here. Dean and Evan. Very much, and thank you all very much. <laughs>